I welcome you to the Liturgy of the Eucharist as we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Father Joe Lynch will be the presider at this Mass. The homilist will be Father James Quirk. The organist will be Teresa Whalen Riches. My name is Sister Lucy Carney. I will be the lector at this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order that we may better offer our prayer, begin, we begin by acknowledging our own failure and weakness. We say together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Responsorial Psalm. My soul shall exult in my God. My soul, soul shall exult in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. 
Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. My soul shall exalt in my God. <clears throat> for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. My soul shall exalt in my God. The Lord has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. My soul shall exalt in my God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Earlier this week, with the apostolic letter, Patris Corde, with a father's heart, Pope Francis proclaimed a year of St. Joseph. It's 150 years since Pius IX declared that St. Joseph is the patron of the Universal Church. And Pope Francis wants us to increase our love for this great saint, to implore his intercession, and to imitate his virtues and his zeal, particularly at this time. And since we in this parish are under his patronage, I thought that I might follow Pope Francis's lead today and look to St. Joseph. This year has highlighted for us the importance of ordinary hidden heroes. Doctors, nurses, storekeepers, and supermarket workers, cleaning personnel, caregivers, transport workers, and so very many others. And Pope Francis calls us to discover in Joseph the man who goes unnoticed, a daily discreet and hidden presence, an intercessor, a support and a guide in times of trouble. St. Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. Calling St. Joseph a tender and loving father, Pope Francis reminds us that it was through him that the Lord Jesus saw the tender love of God. And the Pope asks us to imitate our Heavenly Father and St. Joseph, looking upon our weaknesses with tender mercy. He reminds us that it is not God but the devil who wants to condemn us for our frailty knowing that such self-condemnation inevitably leads into despair, hypocrisy, and judgmentalism. 
That is why, he says, it is so important to encounter God's mercy, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation, where we experience his truth and tenderness. And he goes on, that truth always presents itself to us like the merciful father in, in Jesus' parable. It comes out to meet us, restores our dignity, sets us back on our feet, and rejoices for us. He also reminds us of the obedience of St. Joseph. In the Gospels, he was visited four times by an angel in his dreams, and each time he responded in immediate obedience. In every situation, Joseph declared his own fiat, like those of Mary at the Annunciation and Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so he is then a model of faithfulness to God's purposes. And his obedience was born from his profound trust in God's providence. And the Pope reminds us that even in a year like this one, our lives can be miraculously reborn if we find the courage to live them in accordance with the Gospels. It does not matter if everything seems to have gone wrong or some things can no longer be fixed. God can make flowers spring up from stony ground. And in these trying times, St. Joseph's obedience reminds us that God can and will bring good from every evil. But not only did St. Joseph trust in God, God also trusted in him. Joseph was the man chosen by God to guide the beginnings of the history of redemption. Pope Francis says, he was the true miracle by which God saves the child and his mother. And God acted by trusting in Joseph's creative courage this creative courage is choosing to face difficult situations with faith and trust that God can help us bring out resources that we did not even think that we had. And he also reminds us that parenthood is accepting responsibility for the life of another and is rooted in self-gift rather than in possession or dominance. And Pope Francis draws this out again in a reflection on St. Joseph's chastity. He says, Joseph is traditionally called a most chaste father. That title is not simply a sign of affection, but the summation of an attitude that is the opposite of possessiveness. Chastity is freedom from possessiveness in every sphere of one's life. Only when love is chaste is it truly love. A possessive love ultimately becomes dangerous. It imprisons, constricts, and makes for misery. God himself loved humanity with a chaste love. He left us free even to go astray and set ourselves against him. The logic of love is always the logic of freedom. And Joseph knew how to love with extraordinary freedom. He never made himself the center of things. He did not think of himself, but focused instead on the lives of Mary and Jesus. As this 2020 comes to an end, and as this year of trials continues, let us respond to Pope Francis' inv invitation and seek to follow St. Joseph's, Joseph's example, asking for his intercession, seeking the grace necessary to imitate his tenderness, obedience, trust, creativity, self-giving love, and that grace of graces, our conversion. Patris Corde ends with the daily prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father, and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. And may this be our prayer each day in this coming year.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, rejoicing in the presence of Jesus Christ among us and praying in union with our Savior, let us entrust our needs to God, who gives us the spirit and promise of salvation. For the church, witness like John the Baptist to the light of Christ, and for those who bring glad tidings to the poor and healing to the brokenhearted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of relationships and the forgiveness of all wounds, and for the humility of John the Baptist in our service and praise of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Dave Gillen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and all who mourn and suffer loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O faithful God, and grant that we may always rejoice in the good news of salvation and humbly serve each other in your church as we await the return of the Messiah in glory who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Open us, we receive the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and a work of human hands. Come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hand, become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he, is, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. 
that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us extend to one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us and receive it. May we receive your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, that bring me to judgment and condemnation, but that your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go now in peace to love and serve our God and one another.